Hello everybody, I'm Harry Hoffman. This is the Double H Show. Tonight we're talking a lot of NBA basketball. The Heat go at it with the Lakers tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern on TNT. We're also looking ahead to the AFC and NFC Championship games on Sunday afternoon. Uh, we got a big show today. Let's get it started. This is the Double H Show. The Lakers traveled to Miami to take on a heat that has been banged up lately. Dwayne Wade is out again with that ankle, and LeBron is battling um, in illness, and he is a game time decision. But the Miami Heat have been doing well without Dwayne Wade. They are 4 0 without him and 5 and 4 with him. And people have been asking the question if they are, a, in fact, a better team without Dwayne Wade. And here's my opinion on that. Yes, they're 4-0 without him. Yes, LeBron and Chris Bosh get more leeway, more shots, uh, more touches with Dwayne Wade on the bench and can, and can definitely score a lot of points. But when it comes down to it, um, late in the season and definitely in the playoffs, you, you want Dwayne Wade, your best closer on the floor. Um, and he's arguably you, your best player. You know, LeBron's a great talent, but they've been going to Dwayne Wade late in game games early in the season and he's delivered so you want your guy and especially um, some think he's the leader of that team just because he's been in Miami his whole career so you know they lost three games out west but um, teams from the east always seem to struggle on those long road trips and the Miami Heat just fell into a little bit of a rut so I don't think Dwayne Wade's the reason why they lost four games. I think the Miami Heat will be fine, but you definitely need all three of them on the floor to be competing for an NBA title. Kobe Bryant comes in um, four out of his last five games, averaging, uh, scored over 40 points. He's averaging 30.8 for the season, leads the NBA, and um, is he the best player in the NBA? You know, he's... Finally got healthy knees, and yet he's still playing with an injured rest, uh, wrist. I mean, this guy is unbelievable. He's playing at the top of his game. Looks like the Kobe from about two or three years ago. I think the Lakers have a, a legitimate shot at the title as long as Andrew Bynum plays the way he's playing and Pau Gasol contributes and they get extra scoring from guys off the bench um, and Derek Fisher, of course. So, you know, this Laker team looks pretty good. But back to Kobe, is he the best player? I don't know if he's the best player. You know, my top five is Kevin Durant, Dwayne Wade, LeBron, Kobe, and Derrick Rose. You know, in no type of order. I think I would put Kevin Durant at the number one um, spot just because he can do everything. He can run the floor. He can dunk. He's, he's 6'10". He can, um, he can shoot the three. He can shoot the J. Um, he's quick off the dribble. He can rebound. He can... Um, get a lot of assists so I think and he's clutch so I think he's just the best all-around player in the NBA at this moment and LeBron's probably the best talent but when you think of who's the best player in the NBA that's the guy you want to shoot the ball at the end of the game to win and you know probably many of those guys are ahead of LeBron at this point so I just can't put LeBron at that number one spot just yet until he proves to me that he can take over in the fourth quarter and he can make that game winner. Um, the Ravens take on the New England Patriots on Sunday afternoon in Foxborough. Much speculation about Joe Flacco and the Ravens offense. Ed Reed, in fact, came out this week and said that Joe Flacco looked rattled against the Houston Texans defense. Now, I don't know if this is the best time to be saying something like that about your quarterback. You are entering the biggest game of the season and potentially of your whole careers. You have to have this guy at the top of his game and at the top of his confidence level. level because he's going against Tom Brady, who is playing lights out right now and is just picking his spots and firing it in there. Joe Flacco 
to compete with the Patriots and Tom Brady, he needs to be at the top of his game and have full confidence. He can't have defensive players, you know, Ed Reed's a great guy and a tremendous talent but and a great leader. But when you have somebody coming out and um, saying that you looked rattled the last game, that you didn't have control of the offense, it's just it's a little bit of a confidence downer heading into the AFC Championship game. And I don't think this will bode well for the uh, Baltimore Ravens. You know, I think just Tom Brady and that offense will be too much. And I don't think Joe Flacco, if it gets into a shootout, will be able to handle it. Um, NFC Championship game, Giants at San Francisco. Uh, I will make my picks tomorrow on the show. Uh, but, you know, it's a toss-up. 49ers, great defense, and Alex Smith proved last week that he can play with anybody. So, you know, I really like the 49ers right now, but of course the Giants are just steamrolling right now. Late in the season and into the playoffs, Eli Manning and that defense, they're just playing uh, tremendous football. So I think it's going to be a great game between the, the Giants and the 49ers. And uh, in other news to finish out this show, um, Trinity lost to Yale in squash to end their 252-game winning streak, the longest ever in collegiate sports. <laughs> Think about this. Trinity hasn't lost since 1998. That's more than a decade of winning. I mean, that is just a phenomenal streak. It's sad that it had to come to an end, but just a great feat in squash nonetheless. Uh, that'll do it for today's show. Remember, the Lakers at Miami tonight on TNT should be a great game. We'll come back with my picks for uh, this weekend's AFC and NFC Championship games tomorrow on the show. Thanks for joining us. This is the Double H Show.